Praise the Lord. What is sacrifice? If you look it up on the internet, the first result says that sacrifice is the act of slaughtering an animal or person or surrendering, surrendering a possession as an offering to God. Now, what's the way that we see sacrifice in our own lives? The way I understand sacrifice is giving something up. This could be time, money, or even yourself, and present it to God. But whatever that sacrifice is, it has to be clean and pleasing and holy to God. Let's open up to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So this passage explains that because of God's great mercy, we have to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. If we go up a few verses in 35, verse 35 of chapter 11, it says, Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? None of us, not a human on the world, has ever given anything to God that was worthy of how much he gave us. So whatever sacrifice we give God, it needs to be holy and pleasing to him. And in order to have a relationship with God, we need to be sinless. But sin separates us from God, and sin is an offense to God. So in order for us to have a relationship with God, there needs to be something paid for to have a relationship with him. So God, he can't be mixed in with sin because he is holy. And people, we are born of sinful nature. So there must be a price paid for our sin. It's either the price that typically could be paid is our own lives for sin. But if, he, if God excuses the sin, it's pretty much injustice. If he excuses it like it was nothing, it's not a fair system for anyone. Then if people ask, if there's sin in this world, why can't God just take it away? It'd be a lot easier for us to live without any temptations or anything. But then we have to also realize we were born into this world with sin. We are part of that sin. So God took away all the sin. We would also be taken out of this world. So God set up a sacrificial system so that we can be able to stay on this world and be clean and have a relationship with him. And there is a price that we could pay in order to have a relationship with him. He provided us a system to clean us of our sins. Today I'm going to be telling you guys about well, briefly dipping into the topic of the, old, the sacrificial system in the Old Testament. And how the system changed from back then to now, changed from the New Testament. Let's open up our Bibles, flip to Leviticus chapter 1. The burnt offering. The Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from a tent of meeting. He said, speak to, Israelites, speak to the Israelites and say to them, When among you bring an offering to the Lord, bring as you offer an animal from either the herd or the flock. If you offer a burnt offering from the herd, you are to make, offer a male without a defect. You must present it to the entrance of the tent of the meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. You are to lay your hand on the head of the burnt offering. It will be accepted on your behalf and make anointment for you. You are to slaughter the young bull before the Lord. And then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall bring the blood and splash it on the tent of meeting. You are to skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The son of Aaron and the priest to put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall arrange the pieces, including the head and the fat, on the wood of the burnt offering. You are to wash the internal organs, organs and the legs in the water, and the priest is to burn it all on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to God. So just this little paragraph, 
There are tons of information about how and why the burnt offerings are made. You have to cut it into pieces. You have to do all these steps. But that's only one part. It goes on to for seven chapters, the rules and regulations of the different types of offerings. These sacrifices were not simple. All these rules had to be followed. And if they weren't followed, then the God would not accept this sacrifice because it's not the way he had set up the system. And all the offerings that you made, they were either bird offerings, a dove or a young pigeon, or bowl offerings or grain offerings. They all had to be the best that there you could find of the flocks or a herd. So God set up the sacrificial system to take away sin from people's lives so that they could be, have a relationship with God. So the people went on living their lives. Whenever they sinned, it's simple. They just went to the system, did how it said, and the burnt offering took their sins from them. Because they had to be the living sacrifice for their sins, God set it up so that burnt offering that was living took their, their sins upon the offering the sins from the people to the offering, and it was presented to God. This system was eventually misused. People sinned so often that it was misused, and God started to not accept it. If we open up to Isaiah 66, verse 2. Has my hand made all these things, and so they come into being, declares the Lord. These are the ones I look on with favor, those who are humble and con contrite in spirit, and who tremble at my word. But whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills a person, and whoever offers a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck, and whoever makes a grain offering is like one who presents a pig's blood, and whoever burns memorial incense is like one who burns worships an idol. They have chosen their ways, and they delight in their ambitions. So I say, I will... So I will also choose a harsh treatment for them, and I will bring on them what they dread. For when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. So this is a prophet, Isaiah, talking to the crowd. He says that God, because of their ways, because of how they acted, their sins, they constantly sinned, and they even forgot about the sacrifices. They didn't care anymore. What did, that, what did that have to do for them? So Isaiah talks about how God will no longer accept these sacrifices. People live their own lives. They just follow these steps whenever they sin, and boom, their sins are forgiven. The sin takes away the sacrifice. But... They misused it. They didn't really care about it anymore. So God stopped accepting it. There was, it had no more value in God's eyes. He was disgusted how the people misused the system. So God, he decided to send his only son that would pay this final sacrifice that whoever accepted him would be able to have eternal life, sin free. And when we are sin free, we could have a relationship with God. In Isaiah 53, this whole chapter, it talks about a prophecy of the coming of Jesus. About he will be punished for our sins. In verse 4, surely he took upon him up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He crushed for, for our iniquities and punished that the punishment that brought us peace was on him. He took the punishment that we should have had upon himself so that we could have a sin-free life. And because of his sacrifice to this day, we could live healthy Christian lifestyles and be able to have a relationship with God. Now, 
to expand on this in John 4, 21. This is when Jesus is talking to a Samaritan woman at the well. At 21. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when all worship and the Father, neither it, on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are kind of spirit. It's worshipers the Father seeks. God is, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. So because God took this sacrifice upon himself, we are now able to not go to the altar and have to sacrifice a certain object, like a lamb or a bird. Instead, now, we ask for, our, for our forgiveness from him. We have to be sincere about it. And it says that a time is coming when you will all worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in the Jerusalem. We will not have to go to a certain place to have our sins forgiven. We could go right then and here and have forgiveness from our sins and have a clean relationship with God. God is looking for people who are willing to follow him, who are willing to sacrifice their lives, who are willing to give up some of their time, some of their money, maybe even their own lives for other people to be able to know God and follow him. So we must know that sacrifice for him to be able to have a clean relationship with him, to have a clean getaway to heaven. Amen.